Hi, my name is Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little book haul. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 books here. So it's a mixture of secondhand books, mostly charity shop books and some new books as well because I did have some book vouchers left over from my birthday a few months ago. So we'll start off with the secondhand books. The first two books are books that I received in my latest book subscription box. Um, I normally do separate unboxing videos of these, but I thought I would just include it in this whole video. Um, I'll link below to the Gently Used Book Club, which is who I subscribe to. So the books that they sent me, one I have heard of before and the other one I haven't. The first, the one I have heard of before is We Are All Birds of Uganda by Hafsa Zayan. Um, so I have heard good things about this book. Um, so it's set across two timelines, 1960s Uganda um, and present day London. Um, and I think it's sort of about um, generational divides and that sort of thing. I have heard good things about it. So I am looking forward to that one. The other one I haven't heard of, but sounds interesting. This is Yellow Crocus by Layla Ibrahim. Um, so this is about Lisbeth, who when she is born, she is um, handed over to a wet nurse and it's about the relationship between Lisbeth and this nurse over the course of the years. Um, the nurse, I mean, I'm presuming from the cover, um, the nurse is black, Elizabeth is white. Um, I don't know if this is going to go into sort of like white saviory territory. Um, so that does worry me a little bit, but I will give that a go. Um, the next book is a book that I picked up in work. Um, sometimes people um, leave books lying around that they want to get rid of. So I picked up a play. By Luigi Pirandello which is called The Way Out. So this is very very short, it's only about 60 pages long and it has the um, Italian on one side and the English translation on the other side. It has been edited and translated by Emanuela Servato and Doug Thompson. Um, so I don't think I've read any Pirandello before. I did study un um, Italian at university um, along with German and Spanish and uh, we read some Italian literature, but no Pirandello. Um, so this sounds interesting. It is um, about two ghosts who are reminiscing about their life. Um, yeah, I probably, I mean, it was like 20 years ago that I was at university, so it is a long time ago. My Italian is rather rusty, um, but I reckon even I could probably manage to read this without the translation because it looks pretty straightforward and it is very short. So. I thought I would give that a go. Um, the rest of the second hand books are books that I picked up in charity shops. We have some short story collections. First is short stories from the 19th century, selected by David Stuart Davies. This is a nice little Wordsworth Classics edition with a nice picture of a desk with a typewriter. I think that's really, really, really nice. Um, lots of very well-known authors are featured in this short story collection. Thomas Hardy, H.G. Wells, Elizabeth Gaskell, Oscar Wilde, Chekhov, Bram Stoker, etc. I really, really like short stories. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I think they're great. Like, especially if I am sort of struggling to know what I'm in the mood for or struggling to sort of like settle into reading a novel, um, I just pick up some, sh some short stories and it just sort of like resets it for me. I have a little shelf. So this... This half of this shelf here is the short story collections I have yet to read. So I'll add that to the list. I also picked up the best British short stories 2018. Now I haven't actually heard of any of the authors in this uh, collection, I don't think. So this is a bit of a punt, um, but it's in quite nice condition. I thought I would just give that a go. Um, and then the final short story collection that I got from the charity shops is Ghost Stories by M.R. James. Obviously, M.R. James is very, very famous for writing um, ghost short stories. This is um, a bit of a sort of like an older edition, and I didn't quite realise just how small the writing is <laughs> when I picked it up. So this is very small writing. Um, it might be okay because it's short stories, so it's something that I am going to sort of like dip in and out of sporadically. Um, but I thought I'd pick that up. The man, the man in the charity shop who I bought this from, told me that he has he has this book in five or six different editions, and he reads it every December, which I thought was nice. 
Um, okay, onto the novels that I picked up in charity shops. Um, so The Mystery Heart of Henry Pick, I assume that's probably pronounced Henri Pick, uh, by David Fernquinos, which is translated from French by Sam Taylor. This is a book I have been interested in reading for a while, but I've never quite um, wanted to buy it full price. So I was pleased to see it in a charity shop. It has French flaps, so it's a bit fancy. Um, this is set in um, the French town of Crozon, and a young editor discovers this masterpiece. Um, and she knows that she must bring this novel to Paris to publish this masterpiece. The book is an immediate sensation um, and then people become really interested in the identity of the author and the author was apparently Henri Pick who was a, a deceased former pizza chef um, and people believe that the whole thing is a hoax. How could this man have written this masterpiece? Um, so I think it sort of has elements of mystery um, to it and it's kind of about books. So I thought I would give that a go. Um, the next three books that I picked up in charity shops. Um, my usual approach to buying books is if I can get the book in the library, I will do that rather than buying it. Unless it's a book that I really, really like, I've loved, I've read before, maybe it's a favourite book. So the first book I picked up was Eight Detectives by Alex Pavese. Um, this only cost me 50p and I had to check on my story graph when I was in the charity shop as to how much I liked it because I, I knew I liked this book but it was like did I like it enough to want to buy it and reread it and it turns out I gave it 4.5 stars which is a very very high rating for this sort of like mystery uh, thriller novel so I thought I would buy it and um, I have a terrible memory <laughs> in general but in particular when it comes to remembering the plots of books so when I reread a mystery book like this, it's basically like I'm reading it for the first time because I don't remember anything, uh, you know, any uh, spoilery stuff. I, I just don't remember anything. Um, so uh, in this one, it's about an author, no, not an author, a mathematics professor in the 1930s who then becomes an author. And he wrote um, secrets in a book of crime stories and then he disappears and then in the present day we have a woman who is trying to track him down and um, i think it's quite uh if i remember rightly i think it does sort of like reference crime novels and the crime genre quite a lot so i think it was quite fun in that respect i also picked up life after life by kate atkinson which is a book that i read with my library book club years ago and absolutely loved absolutely loved it um it is a book that i've been thinking i should probably reread at some point soon when i say soon that generally means for me sort of in the next six to twelve months um so this is uh so it starts off in 1910 and uh, during a snowstorm in england a baby is born and then dies immediately and then this baby is born again and lives a little bit longer and then dies. And then she's born again and lives longer again until she dies. So it's basically, uh, Ursula is the character's name. She keeps like reliving her life until she like dies at different points. Um, I remember some of the reading group finding this a bit confusing and I think a few of the group might have DNF'd it. I remember finding it confusing but just going with it. Um, and that seemed to work for me. I remember thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. So I am looking forward to rereading that one. This is the like TV tie-in edition, which I don't love, but you know, other than that, it's in good nick. Um, the other book I picked up secondhand, which I have read before, is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. This has one of those really annoying double covers, a bit like actually this one does as well, Eight Detectives. It's just a bit annoying. Um, so Sorrow and Bliss. I have done an individual review video of this, which I will link down below. Um, this was on last year's Women's Prize Lot shortlist. So I actually DNF'd it initially. Then I went back to it and really, really enjoyed it when I, when I did read it. Um, it is about this... Uh, woman who's married, who is suffering from a sort of unspecified to the reader mental illness um and there was a lot while i didn't give it five stars i think i gave it like four stars which is a really high rating for me um there was a lot in this book that i did really really love and it is one i will i'm sure want to revisit in future so i picked that up 
those are all the second hand books. So now I have some books that I bought new. Um, the first is a book that I have read before. If you've been around this channel for a while, you'll know I love this book. And they had a shelf in, um, it was an independent bookshop where I was. They had a shelf where all the books on that shelf were half price. They had a whole variety of different things. So when I saw this one there, I was like, it's fate. I need to pick it up. And it's The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwaiki Inezi. I love this book. It was one of my favourite books of, when did, it, when did I read this? A couple of years ago. Um, uh, about Vivek Oji, who we know at the start of the book has died, but we don't know quite what's happened to them or how they have uh, their bodies been left on the doorstep of their mother's home. Um, it is a devastating book. It did make me cry. So I'll have to, you know, mentally prepare myself for when I do reread it. But it is a really, um, it's a heartwarming book in many ways as well. So I'm pleased to have this for my shelves. Um, I picked up Severance by Lingamar, which is a book I have been interested in since I first heard about it. It's a pandemic book. It was written and published before COVID. Um, so it's about a pandemic that takes over the world and the main character is part of a small group of survivors and um, but there's some sort of mystery to it and I think this is maybe a little bit satire a little bit of a takedown of capitalism I'm not entirely sure I have heard good things about it and I sort of I quite like pandemic y dystopian -y type things so that sounds good next is a book i've wanted to read for a long long time actually so when i saw it in waterstones i picked it up and it's the tokyo zodiac murders by soshi shimada this is translated from japanese by somebody called ross and shika mckenzie um so this is a very well-known locked room mystery. I love a locked room mystery. It's my favourite type of mystery. And when I say locked room mystery, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, actually. I've heard a lot of people say locked room mystery when they actually mean closed circle mystery. So a closed circle mystery is where there's a specific defined group of people who could be the murderer. Um, that's a closed circle mystery. A locked room mystery, you need a locked room it's like an impossible puzzle, something that could not have happened. Um, this is a locked room mystery and it's well known. Um, so it's split between two timelines. So in Japan in 1936, there's an older centric artist living with seven women and he has been found dead in a room locked from the inside. There's your locked room. Um, and in his testament, he has written a plan to kill these women. And soon after his death, this plan is carried out. These women are murdered. Um, it sounds pretty... Um, and then we also have a timeline in 1979 where the Tokyo Zodiac murders, which is what these murders have come to be known as, um, are sort of obsessing, uh, the populations become obsessed with these murders, but the murders have never been solved. Um, it's meant to be very, very good. I have read one Soshi Shimada before, which was Murder in the Crooked House, which I did enjoy. Um, I think this is this author's most famous work. Um, so I am, um, oh, there's a map, like a, a floor plan. I love a floor pl plan in a, a mystery book. I also picked up The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. This is translated from Japanese by Lucy North. Um, this looks like a fairly short book. I heard about this when it first came out I think well when it was first published in English a couple of years ago um, and it sounds a little bit weird which is my kind of thing so it says the woman in the purple skirt is being watched someone is always following her but the invisible observer isn't a stalker it's much more complicated than that it just sounds a bit weird so I wanted to read it and then the final book is a book I had never heard of before but I took a bit of a punt on it. And it's The Doll's Alphabet by Camilla Gridova. This is a Fitzcarraldo edition. So the first thing that caught my eye was the title, The Doll's Alphabet. Then when I opened it up, I realised it was a short story collection. So we have um, titles such as The Mouse Queen, The Sad Tale of the Sconce, The Moth Emporium, Notes from a Spider, Edward Do Not Pamper the Dead. Those titles just sound great. 
Um, and then I noticed the author, Camilla, Camilla Grudova, who wrote Children of Paradise, which I listened to the audio of earlier this year because it was on the Women's Prize long list. And I enjoyed that, that um, listening to that book a lot, actually. Um, so I thought I would give this a go. I feel like Camilla Grudova probably writes good short stories just based on what Children of Paradise was like. There's probably going to be some like gross bodily fluid stuff in here, isn't there? It's compared to um, Angela Carter and Margaret Atwood. Interesting. So yeah, I uh, I am looking forward to this one and it has fancy French flaps. So those are all my books that I've picked up um, just recently. Do let me know if you've read any of them, what you thought of them. Let me know what you've been reading. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye.